Hi, and welcome to our Two Acre World. Join me as we talk about the science of electric culture and how it can increase your garden growth and reduce the need for fertilizers. Stick around for the whole video and I'll show you every step of my complete system. Let's go. So, what is electroculture anyways? Electroculture is a concept that suggests atmospheric energy can be harnessed to promote plant growth, enhance soil fertility, and improve crop yields without the need for synthetic fertilizers or pesticides. The idea of electroculture has historical roots. In the 19th and 20th centuries, researchers and inventors such as Justin Christoflo, George Lakowski, and Aram Igina all experimented with electroculture techniques with excellent results. They proposed that the Earth's magnetic field plays a role in plant vitality and that simple conductive materials like copper, zinc, and steel antennas connected to wires run underground in the garden might enhance growth. Now be aware, most of the systems they built on farms and in gardens were not little copper coils on sticks. They used large antennas and connected steel wires under the ground for long distances in large agricultural fields. They were able to do this because this type of energy has no distance limitations. A simple example of electroculture would be, when lightning strikes the earth, it creates a chemical reaction in the atmosphere that produces nitrogen-based compounds, nitrates, which fall to the ground with the rain. Farmers have known this for centuries and see increased yields when this happens because nitrates are fertilizer to plants. Electroculture systems attempt to harness the Earth's natural electric and magnetic energy and inject it into the soil to reap the benefits. The effectiveness of electroculture remains a topic of debate. Though not directly endorsing electroculture, modern day successful farmers like Joel Salatin understand the relationship between the Earth's energy and plants. Check out this short clip of a podcast where Salatin talks about the Earth's magnetic energy in regards to fruit trees. Um, I have always and I don't remember where I read it first, but because of energy and the electromagnetic field between the North and the South Poles, what we have, we, ha we have bands of electromagnetic fields going between the poles of the Earth. Uh, I always plant my trees. I look at the little sapling and look at, look at where the biggest root is. There, there's always going to be one like bigger root than any of the others. Put that root facing North. Chances are that tree, that root, that big northern root came on that tree on the north side where it was planted. And so when you plant it using that big root as your north, you're putting that tree in the same electromagnetic orientation that it grew in the nursery. So what happened to electroculture? Energy is free and abundant. A proper system can be installed in a short period of time requires little to no maintenance and can produce results. So what happened to this growing method? The answer lies not in science, but in economics and control. The United States, for example, dealt with a surplus of weapon ingredients like ammonia nitrate, and then they marketed it to farmers as fertilizer. In other words, follow the money. Replace a good thing that is cost effective with something that's not good for us, but profitable for someone else. Sound familiar? The internet craze of electroculture has really done a disservice to its true viability. Electroculture isn't just about sticking a copper wire in the ground and waiting for magic to happen. Spiraled copper antennas with crystals stuck in the soil may look intriguing, but they are the social media version of true electroculture. Personally, I've tried copper coils and wires on sticks and I didn't have any luck at all with them. making ornate antennas, crystals, and yard decorations, and calling them electroculture simply don't work and have pushed many to claim electroculture itself doesn't work. Even major gardening and homesteading channels have tried electroculture with little to no results and it's no wonder. The bottom line is, if you're doing it wrong, you're doing it wrong. Designing and installing a proper electroculture system can and will give you results. It takes some work and effort, but once it's done, it's done. Now let's get to the nuts and bolts of this video. Here's my garden electroculture setup and how I put it together. Check it out. Okay, so this is where this all began. I have one trench that's running east to west and that's gonna be the diversion for all of the cables. And they're gonna center up at 
the 13 foot pole that I have. And then I've got five trenches that are gonna run the length of the garden. What you're seeing here is just a small portion of the dig. I was just getting the direction set. So the trench is running at 11 o'clock down to five o'clock is the horizontal trench. So it's important when you set these systems up that you're aware that your antenna needs to be on the south side of your garden if possible, and your wires are gonna to run to the north. These trenches are about eight inches deep. So I got a really great deal on this galvanized steel wire. Galvanized steel wire is what the pioneers of electroculture used to use. This wire happens to be the bottom tension wire for chain link fencing. It is about a number six gauge or so. And I just scored this on Facebook Marketplace. So uh, then began to roll out the wire and roll and roll. You can see my trenches going the length of the garden there. Here's the wire about eight inches deep. Those lines are running on magnetic north. So I set the lines per the compass. And yes, I know the magnetic north moves from time to time. We're just going to do the best we can. But you want to go magnetic north, not true north. And then I bought some additional supplies. This is beeswax, ring magnets for what are called magnetic antennas. I'll explain that in a moment. So what I need to do is I need to surround these ring magnets in wax because they will corrode and come apart with the minerals from the soil. I put the ring magnets onto one of those pieces of cable to just create a dip to keep my hands safe. And I simply dunked that in there and swished it about, let it get covered, brought it out, let it cool, dipped it in two, maybe three times, and ended up with exactly what I wanted, which was these. They look like little sausages, I guess. So uh, I made six only because I had enough magnets to make six, but I only needed five in my case. The first thing you're going to do is determine the poles, the direction, the north and south, on your magnetic antennas. And then those need to be pointed that correct direction, which I've done here. So those long wires that run from the top of the antenna down the pole horizontally to get where they need to go and then running south to north, once they start that turn from south to north, that's where you install the magnetic antenna. What I'm doing is I'm getting the magnetic energy and I'm kind of compressing it and getting it to move along the line. The mast is made of two four by four posts that are sistered together. So I can put them end to end. I sistered them together with nuts and bolts and two by fours. That's giving me 16 feet. There's three feet in the ground. So I've got 13 feet above ground uh, plus the antenna height. So it's about 14 feet or so. And that's really the minimum you kind of want to go. So there's an additional antenna there that is pointing to the south with an additional donut magnet on there with that bolt that you see. And that's just an additional draw for additional magnetic energy. Then it was our Iwo Jima moment in hoisting of this thing up into this hole. Um, I had my son help me out. You can see all the wires loose there because I didn't want to pull them tight until I was fixed in the ground at the location that we wanted to be at. And we went back and just packed it in and kept checking it for plumb and packed it in. I put a little bit of water in there. I didn't use cement or anything. It's just in the dirt and it is held up just fine. And this is the top of the antenna after the post was raised. And then I ultimately end up completing the antenna in this fashion here. So you're gonna see the wires coming out. Those, that's the galvanized steel wire that's going underground. And then I have additional antenna that's uh, wedged in with all these. So all that energy is going in the exact same place. I've got the multiple types of uh, metals, brass, copper, steel, aluminum up at the top with some additional Ingina spirals up at the top and that's just for good measure. 
And that's the system. It's pretty simple. I dug trenches. I orientated them on correct magnetic north. I ran my wires into these trenches from the antenna. I installed magnetic antennas on each one, wax-covered ring magnets over the wire for additional magnetic energy to flow. And that's it. And I buried them. And then at the end of it, that's all you ever have to do. That's, it's a lot of work up front in my particular case. But when it was done, it was done. But that's it. That's the entire system. That's my garden's electroculture system. Our first year, we saw a definite reduction in pests. Our second season, we were able to grow things we were never able to grow before, as well as getting bigger growth than ever before. This is the beginning of our third season with this system. What they say in the electroculture world is first year it sleeps, second year it creeps, and third year it leaps. Subscribe so you can see how this season in the garden turns out. I hope this video has helped you with your understanding of how electroculture works and how it can help your garden grow. Let us know down in the comments what your thoughts are about this unique growing method. Or post any questions you may have. If you enjoyed this video, do us a favor and zap that like button and subscribe for more homesteading videos. And for all you electroculture fans, check out this cool t-shirt we designed. I'll put a link for it and several other electroculture designs down below. And check out this video next. Thanks for watching our two acre world. Have a blessed day. Now go grow something. Our two acre world gives us a simple life.